Welcome to the Manufacturing Supply Chain Forum. Today's discussion will be on fundamentals of inventory management. So there are two common inventory policies we're going to have a look at today. The first is known as the QR model, sometimes also called the min-max model. This is a continuous review policy often used for A-class SKUs. Our second is the base stock model. This is a periodic review policy often used for B or C class SKUs. So let's cover some assumptions of the QR model first. We assume inventory in the QR model is continuously checked. A fixed order Q is triggered at the reorder point R. We assume that reorders are triggered when the total inventory position falls below the reorder point. Now, the total inventory position is equal to the sum of inventory on hand plus inventory on order. We assume that demand is normally distributed and we also assume in this presentation that lead time has no variability. The reason we do this is to simplify the safety stock calculation for this demonstration. So graphically the QR model looks like this. When inventory position hits the reorder point R, an order of Q is triggered. Now this order Q does not arrive immediately. It takes L periods for the order to arrive. During this time, the inventory decreases down to our dotted line below, which is known as the safety stock level. Safety stock acts as a buffer for the variability in the network during the lead time. Given here in blue, we see the maximum inventory we see in this model, and also the minimum inventory in this model. This is used to calculate the average inventory of a QR model. Our equations for a QR model are given here. So firstly we have our reorder point R which is equal to mu times L, mu being the mean demand times our lead time L plus the safety stock given as Z sigma square root of L. Our average inventory is equal to Q on 2 half our order amount plus the safety stock Z sigma square root of L. This is also known sometimes as the cycle stock plus the safety stock. The safety stock factor accounts for the amount of variability we're willing to accept. Now, there are two performance measures used for the safety stock factor. The first is the cycle service level, sometimes called type 1 or alpha. This is defined as 1 minus the probability of a stock out during the replenishment cycle. So, for example, if we are willing to accept 5% probability of a stock out during a replenishment cycle, this means our cycle service level is 1 minus 5% or 95%. Our second measure is the fill rate, otherwise known as type 2 or beta. Now the fill rate is just a percentage of the demand met. So for instance, if we have a beta or a fill rate of 98%, this means that 98% of the demand is met. And below this we see some calculations we can use in Microsoft Excel to solve the safety stock factor Z for type 1 and type 2. Next we move on to the base stock model. Once again we have some assumptions. So here we have a periodic review of inventory every R periods. And in this model the order amount varies each replenishment as the amount we order up to varies each time. So graphically the base stock model looks like this. At each review period we order from our current position up to the base stock level. This can be seen as the vertical dotted lines and we see how for each review period the magnitude of that vertical dotted line changes. So our top dotted line is known as the base stock level. This is given by B where our base stock is equal to the mean demand mu times R plus L plus the safety stock Z sigma square root of R plus L. Once again the bottom dotted line is the safety stock. This is given by Z sigma square root of R plus L. Once again we show the maximum inventory for a base stock model and the minimum inventory for a base stock model. This is used for the average inventory calculation. 
So our equations for the base stock model are given here. And as we saw before, our base stock level is defined here, where B, our base stock level, is equal to mu times R plus L plus the safety stock, where safety stock is Z sigma square root of R plus L. And our expected inventory, or average inventory, equals mu times R divided by 2 plus Z sigma square root of R plus L. So in our next video, we'll go through some worked examples of the QR model and the base stock model.